Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome, 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 my beautiful, fearfully, and wonderfully made sisters in Christ. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. I welcome you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the chef of all chefs. I hope you all are doing blessed, whether it's morning, whether it's night, whether it's afternoon, wherever you are. I, play, I pray for the blessings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to flow in your life today his grace to just abound in you in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you guys today's word that the lord prepared for us is just so amazing it's one of my favorite faith and it's extraordinary women of faith in the bible the old testament and a few in the new testament so it's just a um a topic that i really really love you know um I look at it like this. My life today where I where I'm at is an act of faith. You know, when I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
That was me believing in a God that I never seen, but I heard about him. All right, so the Bible says, try, try, try and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, and I heard, I had heard how the Lord was such a good God from my husband, because my husband was the one who brought Jesus to me. My parents taught me about God, but they didn't tell me his name was Jesus Christ. So I thank the Lord for just finding the Lord Jesus Christ, who's God, the perfect way that brought a strong connection and, and the gift of faith in me. For we know it is by grace we're saved. It's a gift from God, lest any man should boast. So this is a gift from the Lord. And I thank the Lord for giving me that faith to believe in him, even when I couldn't see him, but I believed in him. And I got so many testimonies. I pray that I will be led to share some with you. And I just thank the Lord, you know. So if you don't know Jesus Christ and God allowed you to turn into this channel, I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that Christ really loves you. He died for you. Look around you right now. There's so much chaos going on all around the world. This is divine appointment. Christ has allowed you to be here right now so you can hear this word of faith that you can believe in Jesus Christ because he's the only way, the truth and the life. He is your way out, sis, your way out to all your troubles, your way out to everything. He will make your life so beautiful. He will bring that peace that you desire. He will bring just so many blessings, truly. So thank you, Lord, for the new person or new people that are watching this right now. I pray that God, you will touch their hearts in the name of Jesus Christ, you know. But what, where am I going with this? Because this is about faith, you know. Thomas seen the, the piercings on God's... Um, palms, right? Hands, you know, and he, he believed that that was the Christ, you see. So how much more for us that we don't see the Lord, but we believe because of his word. We believe because of the uh, old prophets, you know, people like Abraham, people like uh, uh, Naomi, Ruth, uh, you know, so many, we believe their story. And so we act by faith, by following what our old, what the old prof, prophets did and prophetess, and we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let us pray and invite our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be part of this uh, fellowship. And thank you. I thank you guys again for your support and your love. Thank you very much for supporting what we do for our Lord and Savior. Thank you very much. Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you. We honor you, Father. We worship you. We worship you in truth and in spirit. Because you said those that come to me must worship me in truth and in spirit. You are delighted with those that worship you in truth and in spirit. Lord, I pray that you forgive us for all sins committed, that our prayers are not hindered. I pray for everyone watching this. Touch every heart. Remove any distraction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bind their mind to your mind, Lord Jesus Christ. Bind their heart to your heart, Lord Jesus Christ. Let them be one with you, Lord Jesus Christ. Anything they're going through, Lord God, I pray by the end of this video, Lord God, they will feel encouraged and empowered by you, Lord Jesus Christ. We bind the enemy and his lies. We confuse him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We send confusion and division in the kingdom of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You said we could do all these things through you, Jesus Christ. You said whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So Lord, I ask you to just loosen your holy angels to surround each one, each sister in their home right now with their children or husband. I pray that God, you surround them with holy angels, warrior angels, ministering angels, healing angels. Surround them, Lord Jesus Christ, and surround me and my household as I do your will right now. I do your work, Lord God. Speak through me. Teach through me. Just have your way. Let me get out of the way. Let my flesh just get out of the way, Lord. Just use me as a vessel for your kingdom, a vessel of honor. I give you the praise. I give you the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Cover us, O oh Lord God, in your precious holy blood. We thank you for your blood, Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Ghost. We thank you for the word of God, the word of life. Thank you, Lord, the bread of life. Thank you, Lord, the living water. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So what is faith to you? To me, faith is believing in an invisible living God, trusting in Him, having confidence in Him. Some people have faith in doctors. Some people have faith in idols. You know, it's bad. You cannot have faith. That's why the Bible says, don't, don't put confidence in man. You know, you put your confidence in the Lord. You put your trust in the Lord. You know, so that's faith to me. It's interesting, you know, when, um, do you guys remember when Thomas, the disciples came to him and told him how they had seen the Lord, you know, but he wasn't there when the Lord showed up, you know, and he said, I don't believe till I see, you know, and God is so good. God is, isn't the Lord so good? You know, he, he knows each one of us and he knows each one of us struggles and he knew Thomas had that struggle of believing unless he's seen it. So turn to your Bible with me and um, the gospel of John verse 20, excuse me, chapter 20, verse 29 in Jesus Christ's name. We can start from 28, is it? Hmm. Hey, we can go back a little bit. How about we start from verse 24 in Jesus Christ's name. But Thomas, one of the, one of the 12 called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Verse 26. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors began the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. God is so good. Then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. Imagine he still told him that and be not faithless, but believing. How, how, how can Thomas still have, like, how, why did the Lord need to say that to him? Like he was right there. You know, and he said that, be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. That's us. <laughs> That's us. That's us. We haven't seen the Lord, but we believe in the Lord. Amen. It can explain to us what is faith. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. All right, Hebrews 11 verse one, amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, okay? So now faith is the substance. What is the substance? It's a matter. It's something tangible, you know, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we don't see Jesus Christ. We can't touch Jesus Christ, but we can touch him in the spirit, if you know what I mean. That's why Jesus said, those that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. When you get deep and you start worshiping God in truth and in spirit, he comes to you. You can feel him. I have amazing testimonies of how God has revealed himself to me. By when I'm done praying or I'm in prayer, I'll feel his hand on my shoulder or on my head, you know, or when my face is all just, I'm all like, in the closet, I'm facing down, my arm, my hands are out like this, and I'll feel his feet right here on my forehead. To me, that's God revealing himself, you know? So I have seen him in that way by him revealing himself, his spirit next to me. It's been, it's been very, very amazing. And that really helped my faith in Christ to grow, you know? So I encourage you, whoever is feeling discouraged, like, oh, I, I pray, I seek God, but I still am not, 
feeling him. Continue praying. Continue seeking God with all your heart. You know, because sometimes it takes time to break through, you know, when you get into God's presence. But the more you keep going, the more you keep doing it, he starts really seeing the sincerity. You know, that's why he says, uh, it is impossible to, to it's, it's impossible. Thank you. We'll just go to it. Uh, verse um, six, right? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So it's impossible to please God without faith. You must believe. You must have you must have trust in him. You must have confidence in him that he is who he, he says he is. It truly is. It's walking by faith and not by sight. You know, so that you can please him. Because when 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 Whoever is struggling with faith, this is for you. Because when you pray to the Lord, but then you're doubting if your prayers reached God, that right there is very unpleasing to the Lord. You know, you're like a, a ship in the sea. You know what James talks about. It goes back and forth. You know, you're like double-minded. You're, you're unsure about if God is real, if God hears, you know. But here he says, if you, if you have faith, you know, you please him. If you don't have faith, it's impossible to please God. So you must believe that he is listening. And when you diligently, you keep seeking him in truth and his in spirit, he's going to show up. He is going to show up. So I just wanted to touch on that a little bit and um, just encourage you to continue trusting in God, uh, continue seeking the Lord with all your heart. No matter what distract, no matter what trials or um, tribulations you go through in life, those are used to uh, mold you. They're used to give you experience. They're used to give you a testimony, and they're used to build your faith, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, um, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, we will uh, you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of brothers and sisters that really walked by faith. And you also see some that did struggle in their faith, but we're here to talk about the extraordinary women of faith. Let us turn to Genesis chapter 17, verse 15 to 19. Amen. And God said in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and God said unto Abraham, as for Sariah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sariah, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yes, I will bless her. And she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. Abraham laughed first. It was not Sarah who laughed first. One flesh. Anyways, another time for that teaching. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is and a hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. Now go to uh, Genesis chapter 21, and let's see Sarah, verse 21 going to verse one, two, three in Jesus name. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, remember he told Abraham, we just read it. And the Lord visited Sarah as he, he had, uh, let's try that again. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. God keeps his word. God is not a man to lie. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Wow. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Amen. I don't know um, who has been trying to have a baby for some time now, but the Lord is telling me to share this with you. We see that here they were old, you know, very old, in their 90s. Like, how? How could this be? But you see, with God, all things are possible to them that 
believe. All things are possible to them that believe. So if you've been trying to have a baby, and this is for married sisters, not single sisters. Single sisters, you shouldn't be fornicating. You should be keeping yourself pure for the Lord till the Lord sends that blessed man, that Boaz, amen? But for the married sisters, you've been trying to have a child for years now, and you've felt discouragement. You are feeling weary. Um, your faith has been shaken a little bit. I'm here to encourage you. If God can do this for Sarah, God can do it for you. There is nothing God can't do. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and keep on trusting in the Lord. And we have seen it in this ministry in all glory and praise to Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says where two or three agree in the name of Jesus Christ it shall be done. Huh? There was two sisters in this ministry. They could not. They were told they couldn't have. One was um, involved into the occult, I believe, and she went to this witch that was back, back before she met the Lord, okay? We, we all did stuff when we, went, we were lost in the world. Thank God now she's a child of God. Praise the Lord. Very, very powerful, um, blessed sister. You know who you are. I love you. I love you. I love all of you, okay? I thank the Lord for all of you. But this sister is very special to us. Um, she came and she said how this witch had spoken death in her womb. She said she could never have children. My husband and I sat down with her husband and we said, we reject those words. We basically were used by the Lord to encourage and to speak life over her. And we came against the curse that the, the witch was used by the enemy to speak over her womb. We broke that in the name of Jesus Christ and we spoke life in that womb. Oh my goodness. Hopefully someday she can sit down and give a testimony. To make the story short, she bore a son, a beautiful anointed boy, beautiful, beautiful child. God allowed her womb to be fruitful. So do not believe the lies of Satan because the enemy will use doctors. The enemy will use family, you know, to bring discouragement, to bring doubt. But you have to believe in the word of God. Believe in his word. His word says he can do it. He can do it. His word tells you to believe. It's teamwork. Jesus says he can. You have to believe that he can. And God is going to make you fruitful. Then the other sister, she just had um, issues, you know, uh, trying to give birth. And for some reason she couldn't. And she went to the doctors and they said that she cannot have a baby. You know, I don't know what exactly was going on with her. But I remember her telling me that she couldn't have a child. And I said, mm -mm, you can have a child. You can, because the Lord wants you to have a child. We prayed together, and the sister had a boy too, a son. Beautiful child. Pray for this sister that she grows stronger in the Lord, because she's kind of wavering for now. But she, it's blessed to see that God showed himself to be faithful. When we pray, two people pray or three but you must believe, you must have faith, and that's how God moves. You know, so I just wanted to share that to bring encouragement to you, sister, whoever you are. God is speaking to you. He's really um, uh, encouraging you to believe in him that he can do as he says he can do. There is nothing impossible with the Lord, nothing. you got to come against doubt, and if you need Brother Works and myself to pray for you, Please leave uh, um, a message on the bottom or leave a message on the Gmail and we will get back to you, Lord willing. And we will believe God for a baby with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Love you. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Dear beloved, be encouraged. Amen. The other extraordinary woman, because we just spoke about Sarah. Now we move on to, to Deborah or Deborah. We'll find her story in the book of Judges chapter 4 verse 4 okay turn to judges 
four. Judges four. Hope you're there. I'm sorry if I'm too fast. I, um, try to be patient. Amen. Deborah chapter four, verse four to 14. In Jesus Christ's name. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinom, out of Kadesh, Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take, the, take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun? And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jebin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. Wow. And Barak said unto her, If thou will go with me, then I will go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. We see here, Deborah was a very courageous, brave woman. This woman really believed in the God of Abraham, that he was going to go before them and prepare the battle. These men were, 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 they were men that were afraid. Yes, these men did not want to go do this. So God had to use a woman you know, to help the man go forth to this battle, you know, and it's amazing as we continue reading, we'll see what Deborah said to, the, to, to Barak in verse 9, and she said, I will surely go with you. Remember, Barak was like, I won't, I won't go unless you go with me, you know, if you go with me, then I will go, and Deborah says to, to Barak, I will surely go with you, not, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. And he went up, he went up with 10,000 men at his feet and Deborah went up with them. Excuse me, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber the, the Kenite, which was of the children of Hob, Hobab, the father in law of Moses, had served himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent unto the plain of Zaniam, which is by Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak the son of Abinam was gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Har Harosheth of the Gentiles unto the river Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And you can continue reading for yourself at your own time. You know, that this man was a coward. He was afraid, you know. But the Lord used Deborah to give him courage to go forth into battle, you know. So you might have a husband, sisters, you know, um, that is afraid, you know. He's afraid to lead the home. He's not walking in his calling. And you have to be the leader in your home and, and make decisions and, and such things. You got that Deborah spirit inside of you, sis. But you just got to make sure you're doing it with a humble, meek, and a gentle spirit. You know, because he's still your husband. He's still the head of the house. And this is just a test for you. Are you going to pass or are you going to, you know, um, let Jezebel rule over, you know, over you, over your home? 
um, De Deborah, Debora, Deborah, she was married, you know. And I, I have these chats with the Lord. I'm like, Lord, why did you not use her husband? You know, um, you know, you gotta have these type of talks with the Lord. Just God, God loves when we're very open and free with Him because it shows that child, childlike faith, that connection. You really believe, you know. But Deborah is an excellent example of, you know, many of you women, you sisters, we get numerous emails from from y'all and we feel it we we understand we understand you know what you're going through and it's such a test but god picked you because he knew you could do it you know as long as you don't allow the spirit of jezebel to take charge you would do fine you will do fine by helping your husband mature into that man of god that god has called him to be Okay, you be meek, you be gentle, you be kind. Don't worship authority over him. Um, pray for him. You know, just just trust the Lord to help you, help him. Because when he becomes fired up, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You know, you will look at, you will look back and be like, wow. That was the work of my labor, like Paul said, you know, the work of your labor. You put, you put time in, you put hours in praying for your man, uh, being an example for him, that you fasted for him and you seen God mature him and, and he became, you know, the man that he was called to be. Some of you sisters, you're so um, excellent at your work at uh, um, workplace you're better than your supervisor you know and you know you are you're not boasting but you know you know you're good at what you do but still you don't lose res respect for that supervisor because they're still on top of you you have to obey them right it's the same thing your hubby don't lose respect because you lead the path show him the respect show him the love because one day that man is going to rise up and that lion in him is going to roar amen and he's going to do the job that god called him to do you know so just be very very encouraged in um in your marriage be encouraged god is good god is good Another sister, we're not going to talk much about her, but I find, and these, these, these women that I mentioned, these are women that I really like enjoy their stories. I, I look up to, you know, I, I really admire, I find them to be very brave and courageous, you know, um, Abigail is another one. You can, when you, when you have a, um, time, free time, you can turn, um, you can read her story is in fast, uh, First Samuel chapter 25. I'll just paraphrase it very quick. You know, Abigail was a woman that really loved the Lord, and she believed in King David. She believed in King David, but her husband was a foolish, harsh man. His name was Nabal. He did not want to help King David. And Abigail went right ahead and, and helped King David. I don't want to like mess up the story for you because I want you to go and read, you know, and see what Abigail did. Abigail went ahead and served the king. He went ahead and served the king, you know. And some of you sisters, you have husbands that are not in the Lord. And when you want to support the kingdom of God, they want to come in between the work of God. And that's when you have to realize, do I obey God or do I obey my husband? No, you obey God. Because if God has told you to support the kingdom, you support the kingdom. So Abigail, she knew her husband Nabal was a drunk, was a foolish man. She wasn't going to listen to what Nabal was saying. She went ahead and did what God had put in her heart to help King David. You know, it's it's so amazing. Like these these women are just... Women of faith, brave women, you know, and God is raising such in this last hour. Women of faith, 
brave, courageous, that are not afraid, that are not, that, that are not moved by the cares and, and, and the things of this world, you know? So I love just how Abigail went ahead and did what she did. Again, find that story in First First Samuel chapter twenty-five. You know. And my next one is Ruth. Yes, Ruth. Ruth the Moabite. Ruth, amazing, amazing story. And we can turn to Ruth chapter one, verse twenty-two. Hold on, Ruth chapter one. all right Ruth 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 hallelujah another brave um, loyal she was more loyal you know and brave too because again if you've read the story of Ruth she was not a believer she didn't she was not a believer in the beginning you know but her husband was a believer so go read the story I just Talk, touch, touch on it to get you excited to want to open up your scriptures and read. For those that don't read, okay? For those that read, amen, keep on reading. For those that don't read because you're either distracted or so much going on, you got to do so much in the house, get some time and read these stories. They're just so beautiful. They will really empower you, you know? Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. In the name of Jesus Christ. I guess we're just going to read the whole chapter. Amen. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elmelech. In the name of his wife, Naomi, in the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilon, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Emelek, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. And Malon and Chilon died also, both of them, and the women was left of, two, left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord has visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were, t they were grown? Would you stay for them from having, would you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again and Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. Faithful Ruth, loyal. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and, to her, and, to, and, and unto her gods. You see that? You see that? Very, very interesting. These two women were not believers. They, they were worshiping false gods. So Oprah went to her false god and returned there after, excuse me. And she said, verse 15, and she said, I'm going too fast, I could tell. And she said, behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee 
or to return from falling after thee, for whether thou goest, I will go, and whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I, bur will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So they went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were, when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And you can continue reading. Where am I going with this? Par paraphrasing this. We see that these two women were Moabites women. They were Moabites and they were married to um, um, Naomi's sons. You know, and they were believers of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, so when they, their sons died, when Naomi's sons died and Naomi's husband died, Naomi didn't want to stay there no more because they had left Judah because of the famine that was going on. And they came, they, they lodged this other uh, uh, land. But when her husband died and the, the, her sons died, she didn't see the need to stay there. She wanted to go back to Bethlehem. So she's packing, wants to leave, but Ruth is like, no, 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 I'm going to come with you. I am following you, you know. She didn't even believe in the Lord, but she became a believer, you know. She walked by faith and not by sight. You know, I find her story very, um, very encouraging and uh, also amazing, you know. It's like some of us, we were not believers when we were, were lost in the world. Some, some were serving you know, false gods, some, you know, just, and then you meet a man that believes in the Lord, you come together, you quit following false gods, and you become a believer in the Lord, you know, and how she chose to follow Naomi and go with Naomi is, is, is just amazing. It shows that Naomi was an excellent elder, you know, that Ruth trusted her with her life. You know, and there could be some elder women watching this, you know, that have daughter-in-laws, you know, that these daughters, they look up to you. Some do. <clears throat> they look up to you. They, you got to be examples, as the Bible says in the book of Titus, you know, for the elder to teach the young women how to love their husbands, you know, to obey their husbands, you know, but that's another teaching for another time. It, it's just, I was amazed by how Ruth chose to follow Naomi. Naomi let her know, I'm not going to be able to bear any more children. Like, just go back, get married to, you know, where you come from. But no, she followed Naomi. She went with Naomi. And God had, her, God had a plan for, for Ruth, you know. God had a plan for Ruth. Ruth ended up meeting Boaz, you know, and the story goes on. Um, I just wanted to share Ruth as, as a perfect example of a woman of faith, you know. Um, she walked by faith and not by sight. She believed in, in um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. She believed in the God of Naomi, you know, and she went forth and she renounced, renounced her false gods and went ahead and went this journey like many of us you know we renounced all the false gods and we walked by faith and believing in the invisible living god amen another sister woman of god that i really love her story is esther 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 you know esther was an amazing uh jewish queen before she was a queen she was an orphan you know, she was an orphan. She lost her parents. And Mordecai was her co cousin. And he brought her up. He taught her. He just took care of her. You know, and you can find the story of Esther in um, the book of Esther. You can read that, how Esther was so brave when, you found, when, when she found out from Mordecai that Haman was, was planning, was plotting to kill the Jewish people. Uh, immediately Esther called a fast, you know, three-day fast, 
told the people to fast and that she was going to seek the Lord for deliverance. You know, and again, take your time and read that story back in the days. You know, can you imagine being married and you can't go see your husband? Like Esther was like, was, couldn't go see her husband unless she was summoned to go see her husband. But she said, I'm going to fast and I'm going to go see my husband in his palace. What a brave woman. What a brave woman walking by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. She was walking by faith, going in there, crying out to the Lord for her people. Deliverance, you know. So Esther is an amazing woman, you know. I don't know what you're going through, but if God has called you to go on a fast, to cry out to the Lord and believing in, and believing in the Lord for that deliverance, whether it's for your child who's unsaved, whether it's for a family member that has been um, uh, hit with the coronavirus and you're praying and fasting, keep on believing in the Lord. Keep on trusting that God will heal that family member if it's God's will, if it's God's will. Amen. So Esther is a perfect example that she did not fear man. She only feared God. And she said, if I die, I die. You know, that is brave. Brave, brave, brave. I just love, love, love uh, the story of Esther. Now, we can move on to um, the New Testament. Some women of faith, you know, some women of faith that I also admire. You know, it's, um, we thank God for these women, we really do. I would say, let's turn our uh, Bible to Luke chapter one. Matthew, Mark, Luke chapter one. Amen. I hope you guys are having fun. <laughs> I love the topic about faith. I just love it. Love, love, love. Like I preach, I preach in my house about faith a lot in this house. I, I love just sharing, especially with the boys, you know, got to preach to our children. You know, they need, they need the word of God from dad and mom. Got to so plant those seeds, plant those seeds of faith. So they, as they grow, they know that they can trust in God and how we live in our home as mothers, you know, our children watch us. And they see if we have faith when situations arise, do we have faith? You know, it's, it's very important that our children learn from us. So anyways, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou art, hail thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Imagine that. Can you imagine the Lord said that to tell, saying that to you? That's like beautiful, 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 beautiful. She was highly favored, blessed among all women. Among women, blessed among women. Amazing. God picked her. She was, she was some, something about Mary. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the, over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. 
Therefore also that the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Wow. Mm. And behold, behold, thy cousin Elizabeth. Yes, that's me. I'm, my name is Elizabeth too. Praise the Lord. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. So Elizabeth was also barren. Again, a barren woman here. And God did what he did. Amazing. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. See, Mary just believed. She said, And behold, let what you've said come to pass according to thy word. Let it come to pass. She believed. And I believe her believing immediately. The Lord allowed her to get pregnant. You know? So Mary's another wonderful example of a woman that, you know, wow, she actually got visited by an angel. Can you imagine an angel just showing up in your home and visiting you and saying, you know, what God has told him to say? It's, it's, it's wow, it's amazing, you know? So she believed, because this is about faith. She had faith in what God said. It will come to pass in her life, and it came to pass in her life. We, we all know those that read the story of Jesus. If Mary did not, you know, who knows? Thank God Mary obeyed. Thank God Mary had faith. Because we have life in Christ. We have life in Christ. So we thank God for, for Mary, you know. The other... Uh, sister that I also uh, find encouraging when I read a little bit about her. So little said about her, but it's powerful. The widow, the poor widow. You'll find her in Luke 21. Okay, turn to Luke 21, verse 2 and 3. How about we just start from verse 1? In Jesus Christ's name. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in tither two mites, two pennies. And he said, of a truth, I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. You know, like this woman gave all she had, not worrying what she's going to eat tomorrow, you know, but walking by faith, believing in the Lord, that God will supply all her needs, you know. And this is how we have to be, because this is, what, this is what pleases the Lord, you know. She was selfless. She was selfless and she gave her two pennies, her last two pennies. And God was so touched by that, so touched by that. So have faith in the Lord. If you worry about where your rent's going to come from, uh, basically how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to put food on the table, just remember, the Lord says, if he can take care of the birds that fly in the air, how much more you that are made in his own image, he will take care of you, he will provide for you. He will supply all your needs. All you got to do is just have faith and believe, okay? And make sure you are striving to walk holy in an obedience in the Word of God. Because obedience is very important too. You know, it plays a big part in us having faith, you know. So we see that this woman, she put all she had and God was really touched, touched by her um, act of faith, you know. And then the next woman is the woman with the issue of blood. Mark 5 Verse 25, you know, amazing, amazing, amazing. Mark 5. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 29. 
let's do it. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. So sad. And that's some of you, you know, that's some of you. Your bodies are sick. You've seen many doctors. You spent so much money, but nothing's happened. It's even gotten worse. But fret not, fret not, fret not. Just believe. Just believe. Let us continue. Verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Look at that. Faith without works is dead. She had faith. If she could just touch the garment of the Lord, that she will be healed. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She felt it. She was healed. She was healed because she acted. She moved, you know, she moved and she touched the Lord. And immediately the blood dried up. So I don't know, again, who's going through sickness in their body and for how long you've been struggling with that sickness to the point where your faith, it has been sh uh, shattered. There's a reason for it. There's a reason why you're going through what you're going through. And probably the enemy has really tormented you with doubt in your mind. Your heart has probably gotten bitter with God, feeling like God don't care. But God cares. You're his temple. If you're living your life according to his will, God cares. God wants to help you. But if you're also struggling, like, like we read, it is impossible to please God without faith. If you're struggling with faith because of what you've gone through for years, you know, it's time to repent. Ask God to forgive you. Renounce doubt. Come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. And ask God to fill you with perfect love that cast away all fear. Ask God to purify your faith that you can believe for healing from the Most High God, the Most High Living God. He is a living God. God allows us to go through trials and tribulations in life for a reason. It was last year I went through a very like um, rough time. I had problems with my stomach, like I just was in pain there was times I would, I would not be able to sleep it was very painful I had to go on a gluten diet you know I, I was not running to a, 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 the doctor first I, I trusted the Lord sister I trusted the Lord I prayed and I asked God to guide me to knowledge that will help me change if I'm eating wrong if there's something I'm doing I even humbled myself I said Lord if I have sinned against you forgive me you know forgive me shut any unclean door I did all that sis and I waited on the Lord glory be to God God came through he healed me supernaturally now mind you I had gone to a doctor an Indian doctor and he was talking about putting some endoscopy in my throat. And I asked him, how long have you done this? Have you ever had any accidents? You know, I'm not going to just trust my life, you know, in, in a man because they're in a white coat and 
No, I want to find out how long you've been doing this. And I prayed, God, lead us to the right person and give me the questions to ask. So I did. I did my research. I asked these questions. And when he told me he's had a few accidents, I was like, thank you, Lord. That's a sign. That is a sign right there, you know, because I love to sing to the Lord. And I wasn't going to have, you know, the enemy use that opportunity. Be like, oh, look, she was faithless. She, she trusted man. She went and she laid to put her to sleep. And you no, know, I said, Lord, thank you. I repent of even thinking about it, Lord. And again, I, I'm not against doctors, you know. No, no, no. I'm not against doctors. I'm just giving you my experience, my testimony, that I did try to go that route. But God is so good. He made me find out, you know, that just because a person struggles f- for, for so long, whether it's years or months, that we have to be patient and wait on the Lord and we have to be willing to fast. You know, we have to w- be willing to fast. We have to be willing to, to research, you know, find out. So anyways, to, to cut this short, you know, glory be to God. I never went for that endoscopy, whatever, you know, test they were going to do. I trusted the Lord. I changed my diet. I got off the gluten diet. I went back on a gluten-free diet. And I seen the hand of the Lord. It moved. It moved upon me. My sleep schedule came back to normal. You know, and I thank the Lord because my husband was there for me. My husband was praying for me. My husband would stay up nights with me, you know. So that was a season in my life. I had to go through what I had to go through. I had to have faith in the Lord in that season in my life. I had to. I had seen so much of God's hand in my life, in our children's life, in my husband's life, in our family's life, in the ministry. And sometimes our faith wavers. And I think at that time, my faith was wavering because I, had, I was going through so much pain every single night. It was like clock, like a certain time, and I would just be in pain. You know, I was barely eating, and I just said, I'm going to go to the doctors, and I'm going to check and see what's up, Lord. You know, trust. The enemy tried to attack me. It might be cancer. It might be, oh, it was horrible. I had to cast those thoughts down. That's the other thing. Cast them thoughts down. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, casting down imaginations. Cast those thoughts down. Because if you sit there and believe those thoughts, those lies, they're going to come reality. They're going to become reality. Okay? So, remember, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those that love it shall eat the food thereof. You know? Because the enemy brings the negative, the, the, the deathful word, words, and then a person speaks it out. And then it becomes reality. So I just share that because I know there is someone going through stomach issues. Someone going through sickness in their body. You know? And you, your faith has been moved. But God is using this to give you a testimony. To show you His power. He wants to be glorified in your life. He got glory from out of my life with that. He got glory. He really did. I called the hospital, you know, the, the place that I was going to go. I called and I, and I said, Jesus Christ healed me. Thank you for your time. He is Lord. I had to do that. I had to do that. You know, so please be encouraged. Repent of any, any sins that you know you're committing. Or you don't know, like I said, you know, I had to humble myself and say, Lord, hey, remove in, remove in me any hidden iniquity that I don't know of. David did that. Why should we not do it? You know, so just be very encouraged. Reach out to the Lord's uh, garment, like this woman with the issue of blood. She spent a lot of money trying to get help, but no one could help her. But the great physician, Jesus Christ, the remedy. Amen. He can help you. He can touch that clay. He's the potter. You are the clay. He can take care of it.
So be very, very encouraged, my sister. The Lord loves you and he sees what you're going through. So Lord, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this time that we were able to learn more about faith. We've seen from the book of Genesis in a little bit in the New Testament, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, Lord, we've seen how these women had faith, how courageous, how brave, how loyal they were, and how you moved on their behalf, Lord. I'm praying for this sister or sisters that are struggling in their body right now, Lord God. I'm trusting you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you will purify their faith. Remove the discouragement, Lord God. Remove the doubt. Remove the bitterness in their hearts, Lord. And fill them with courage. Fill them with faith. Fill them with confidence in who you are. The Lord, they will see your hand. Lead them to knowledge of what they can use that is natural to help with the issue, Lord Jesus. Touch their body, God, bring healing to their body, whether it's the stomach, whether it's the heart. Bring healing to that body that is suffering, Jesus. They've suffered for quite some time, Lord. Bring glory to your name. Deliver them, Lord, deliver them. Give them a sound mind, Jesus. Touch their mind. Make their mind sound, Lord. Make their mind believe that you can do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let them testify on the goodness of the Lord. Touch the sister with the thyroid problem, Lord God. Touch her, Lord Jesus, and heal her from that, God. Give her the wisdom of what she can take that is natural, that can help, Lord Jesus. You have things down here for us to use to help our bodies, Lord. Give your children the wisdom. Those that are lacking wisdom, Father, give them the wisdom. Give them the knowledge, Lord, that they may know how to take care of your temple, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I pray for the sisters or sister, Lord, that is struggling with a husband who's like Nabal, a foolish man who doesn't want to help to build God's kingdom. Bring conviction to that man. Visit that man in his dreams, Lord Jesus. Reveal yourself to him before it's too late for him. Lord Jesus, I pray for the sister who feels discouraged and feels like giving up in her marriage help her to remain firm to be a light for her husband to pray for him to be a Deborah Lord Jesus to encourage him to be that mighty man that God is calling him to be help her fill her with meekness and gentleness in a quiet spirit which is a great price in your sight, Lord, that she will testify on the goodness of God and that they will become an item like Aquila and Priscilla, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ to all nations. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Bless my sisters from the crown of their heads, Lord, to the soles of their feet. Fill them with the joy of the Lord, which is their strength. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for the mother-in-laws to be excellent examples for their daughters-in-laws. 
There's so many women in the New Testament too that were women of faith. Eunice, Lewis, Lydia, Tabitha. So many, Lord. And we thank you for them. Help these mothers-in-laws to be examples for their daughters-in-laws. To teach their daughters-in-laws how to love and be kind and be submissive and obedient to their own husbands, Lord Jesus. And help the daughters-in-laws to be kind to their mothers-in-laws, caring for them, serving them in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. Let there be peace in these homes where a mother-in-law is living with her daughter-in-law. Let there be peace in these homes, Lord. Let the daughters-in-laws be examples if they are Christians. Let the mothers-in-laws be examples if they are Christians. Let them treat each other the way they want to be treated. That's what you've, you, taught, you taught us, Lord. You taught us in your scripture. Treat one another the way you want to be treated. So, Lord, help your bride. Help your bride. Help many that are struggling with this coronavirus. Many are being attacked with fear. Father God, Calm that storm. Calm that storm, Lord. Remind them to speak to that mountain. You said, if we speak to this mountain, it shall move. You seen the fig tree, Lord Jesus Christ, and you see it did not bear no fruit. You cursed that fig tree, and it was cursed, Lord Jesus. Father, we know this is your doing, Lord. We know this whole coronavirus, all this going on. We know it's your doing. You're allowing it, Lord. You're allowing it. Nothing. Satan cannot do anything without you allowing. We know you're allowing it because it's a time you want your bride to come to you and get cleansed, to seek your face, to draw back to you. I pray for every sister that has been drawn to the world to be drawn back to you in the name of Jesus. Draw them back to you. Draw their hearts back to you. Draw them to their first love, Lord God. Cause them to see a new, fresh anointing upon their lives, Lord Jesus. Let the joy of the Lord come upon them, that they can enjoy being moms again and being wives in the name of Jesus Christ. Break the yokes of the enemy off their lives, Lord. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that your will be done in all of their lives, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Father. We come against the spirit of doubt. We bind and break the spirit of doubt in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Father, receive all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, guys. I love you. Praise the Lord. See you again, God willing. Um, yeah, I don't know when, but God will lead me. Just keep on praying for me as I pray for you guys. Amen. Love you guys. Shalom. Jesus Christ is Lord. Don't you know by now that Jesus Christ is the only way, the way to the Father.